Hey everyone, it's Sean. Welcome to the Illustrator Charts and Graphs section of our course. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be walking you through how to import data from Excel into Illustrator or how to write your own data into Illustrator and create different types of charts and graphs and apply certain different effects uh, to elevate your graphs to a whole new level and just really add in that nice little tweak of extra design sort of je ne sais quoi. Did I actually just say je ne sais quoi? I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's too early for me. Uh, so to start, we're going to go up to File, New, and we're going to create a new document. I'm just going to keep it in 4x6 RGB color because I'm not printing anything. We're just working on screen, so it's totally cool. And uh, the first thing that I want to sort of bring to your attention is the uh, Charts and Graphs tool. It's right down here. Um, if you click and hold on it, you can see all the different styles of Charts and Graphs that we can create in Illustrator. But for now, I'm just going to keep it on a simple column graph tool. Um, I think we all recognize this as a bar graph tool, but, you know, Illustrator likes to get uh, fancy. Um, the next step is to draw out our graph. And this can be kind of tricky because uh, you almost need to know the size that you want to work with your graph before you draw it out, which can be um, annoying because this tool isn't very easy uh, or it doesn't let you adjust the sizing very easily um, as we move through it. So just make sure you draw out a healthy sized graph. Uh, I'm gonna do one that looks, you know, about two thirds of the size of the page. And what you're left with is uh, this one column, it goes up to one, and it only has one data point on it. So what, uh, what Illustrator wants you to do um, is import data. That seems like the most obvious easy choice. And in your charts and graphs um, folder that I've provided for you, you should have an XLS file called taco data. Um, and I was hungry when I made this. And uh, what we can do is actually we can hit open and you know, Illustrator freaks out. Um, it doesn't really like this because it has to be such a specific parameter of data um, that this just isn't going to work. So we can actually hit Command Z and come back to uh, our original sort of um, data point here. And we can go into Excel. And what I wanna do is I wanna select um, the beef uh, taco. Uh, all the way down to the fish taco number and I'm just gonna hit command C to copy I'm gonna come back into Illustrator and I'm just gonna hit command V to paste and you'll notice it'll auto populate in all of our um, data here and the reason why I'm leaving the title out is because the title is something that we can um, generally design ourselves in, in Illustrator using proper type tools and uh, actually make it look much nicer than what a chart would um, and we can simply just come over here and hit apply and when you hit apply, you get your different uh, charts. Um, and you know, things look pretty basic. It's all black, it's got a really heavy stroke around it, etc. cetera. Uh, so it's time for us to sort of maybe look at, um, you know, adding in some uh, design flair. So I'm just gonna close down that data visualization window. And I'm going to have my uh, selection tool um, and I'm actually gonna switch over to our direct selection tool. And I'm gonna open up our swatches panel. And when we open up our swatches panel, we can pretty quickly just start choosing uh, choosing some colors. Um, so, you know, for beef, I want it to be red. Uh, for um, veggie, I want it to be green. Pork could be maybe a uh, orange color. And then fish definitely needs to be blue because it's water-based. But if we notice, we have this really gross stroke. So you can just, uh, using the direct selection tool, select all of your uh, bars and just go up here and select no stroke. The thing about the uh, charts and graphs is they're a live dynamic object. So using the selection tool um, will not let you just make changes right out of the gate um, because you Illustrator thinks that you want to make changes to the entire shape itself. It's kind of this one massive grouped element. And if we ungroup it, we break the data, um, we won't be able to adjust anything anymore. So you kind of just want to be very careful when you're making some of these changes here. Um, but the next thing I want to do is uh, this sort of um, X and Y axis feels really thick to me and I don't really like it. So using my direct selection tool, A on the keyboard or just right up here in the top right corner, uh, I'm just going to select our X and Y axis axes and I'm going to also make sure to select these little tick points 
I got the tick points on the other side as well. And I'm going to lower the stroke here from one to something like a quarter of a point. And of course, it didn't want to. There we go. Um, maybe to a quarter of a point. Might actually need to be a half a point. We'll see how it looks. No, a quarter of a point looks fine. So the next thing we can do is we can look at changing some of the typography. Right now it's just set to Minion Pro and it's kind of gross. Uh, or sorry, Myriad Pro. Um, but what we can do actually is when you select your graph, this properties panel opens up. And if your properties panel isn't here, you could just simply go to window and then go to properties. Um, and we can actually change the character, uh, the character um, typeface. And uh, I just want to set mine to Acumen. Um, I'm going to use Acumen Extra Condensed Medium. So there we're getting something that looks a little bit more customized. Uh, and the cool thing is about this is if we want to go back in and change our data, it's really easy to go in and do that. You can either under the properties panel, there is a graph data option right or there's a graph type option which you could also go in and this allows you to change the type of graph which we'll get into in a second the other place you can go to do this is under window um do, 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 do. window there is a graph section here just give me one second so instead of looking under view where we would like to look is under object and then uh, object graph just down here. And you can open up the type panel. You can open up uh, the data or um, the other option too, which was there. Uh, but anyways, um, this is how you can get to that sort of uh, window if you don't have it available down here. I'm pretty sure all the new versions should have it here, um, but just in case, you know, there's always three ways to get to things within Adobe, and it's pretty pretty good. Um, so with our graph still selected, I'm going to click on graph data, and the one thing about this that is really nice is uh, you can go, you know, and auto update some of these stats. So let's say beef all of a sudden isn't as popular, it only sold 120 units uh, we can you know update that to 120 subsequently like if we needed to add in um, an option maybe instead of fish it's like carne carne asada and it does wildly well it sells 200 units um, we can go in copy all of this we could also make the adjustment from beef to uh, 150 it does slightly better now it's at 180 so we can select all of our data hit copy and bring it into Illustrator again and select everything and hit paste and it'll automatically know to format the new um, the new data point it'll update the new numbers we can hit OK and it'll auto generate a new uh, like a new section you know what I mean so the graph tool is really great as long as you leave it I'm just gonna delete the um, carne asada section. I don't need it there anymore. Um, so when you go to uh, remove or update, um, you're not necessarily typing in the cell. You're typing up in this field here, and it will affect the cell down here. Just something to be aware of. And you always have to hit enter after you're done or this check mark um, applying a new value. So uh, the check mark applies it to the graph. Enter sort of applies it to the field uh, just to get that out of the way. Now let's say we don't want a line graph. We want to change the graph type and we want to bring it over to a pie chart. So we can select pie chart and you can tell there's all sorts of different um, graph styles here. Uh, but we're going to go to pie chart. We're going to hit OK. And oh, that doesn't look so good, does it? That doesn't look like a pie chart how we're used to seeing it. And the reason for that is because our data is not um, it is not laid out properly in this uh, window uh, for how Illustrator wants to interpolate it. So what we have to do is we have to come up to transpose column and row. And what that does is it just rearranges it. So instead of it being organized vertically, it's now going to be or organized horizontally. And it allows for Illustrator to properly interpolate our data. Uh, now, unfortunately, it lost all of our colors. So that's something we have to go and reapply. Uh, so I know beef was our red color. 
and using the direct selection tool, A on the keyboard or up in this top right corner, we can go working, count, uh, working clockwise uh, and select the colors that we had in here previously. So veggie was green, which I don't like that color green, I like this color green. Uh, veggie was green, pork, I think we agreed on orange, and fish was blue. Cool. And unfortunately, yet again, it applied this really ugly stroke that I want to get rid of. So we're just going to use our direct selection tool. I'm going to select all the shapes, not the words, but just the shapes and uh, get rid of the stroke by applying no stroke up there. Um, all right, cool. So this looks like an okay pie chart, but what if we wanted to sort of elevate it to another uh, level and we wanted to sort of make it look like a donut? Well, what we can do is we can grab our ellipse tool. We can fill it with white since that's our background color right now. And from the center, we can hold alt option and shift and drag out from the center. And all of a sudden, just by sort of putting one extra shape, it makes this graph look so much better. It kind of makes it look more expensive, more designery or designery. Wow. It makes it look like it was designed by a professional instead of just being um, sort of manhandled in a Microsoft Word uh, document or an Excel spreadsheet or something like that. Um, now what I'm going to do is using my selection tool, I'm going to select all of this and I'm just going to copy and paste it off to the side. I'm just going to duplicate it. I held alt option shift and just dragged out. You guys could copy paste if you'd like. And I want to show you, um, how to go about breaking, uh, this live sort of shape um, and making it so that the data is no longer editable. You would think that to do that, we'd have to go up to object and hit expand. And unfortunately, you would be doing that forever and a day because it doesn't do anything. What we actually have to do is go to object and ungroup. And then you'll get this warning dialog box saying that this contains a graph. Once it's ungrouped, you'll no longer be able to access its style data or change its graph designs. That's fine as long as you have your graph good to go, the information is correct, and the styles that you've applied up until this point are correct as well. So I'm going to hit yes. I'm fine with that. I don't have a problem with it. But the thing you'll still notice is it's all still one massive group. So what we have to do is we have to ungroup and you would think, oh, cool. Now I, now I have the ability to sort of move things, but you don't because the uh, pie sections are still tied to their section of the uh, legend over here. So I'm just going to select everything. I'm going to hit uh, ungroup again. Um, for those of you keeping score at home, it's shift command G. So shift command G, 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 G. I'm just going to press it a bunch of times to ungroup everything for sure. And now we are left with our cool little pie slice. We still have this donut in the center. And if you want to make sure that, um, if you want to see if something is actually transparent versus being a shape that's just filled with the same color as your background, what we can do is we can hit shift command D to bring up the transparency grid in Illustrator. And what you'll notice is this is just a white shape on top of another shape, um, but it's not actually like negative space, you know? So to get rid of this, what we can do is we can click and select all of this. And there's a few different things we can do. We can either go to window and open up Pathfinder, which we'll cover a little bit later. So don't stress out if you're not uh, familiar with this, but we can go to Pathfinder and we can select divide. And that will actually do something because uh, once you hit divide, you can select everything and ungroup it one more time. And we can go in and select each of these white sections and delete them. So that's one way to go about doing things. Or what we could do actually is I'm going to command Z a few more times until I get my whole circle back. So my whole circle is back here. And oh, I went a little bit too far because now all my shapes are grouped again. Cool. The next thing we could do is we could select our entire graph plus the donut circle in the middle. And we can come over here to our shape builder tool, click on that and holding down alt option, you'll get a negative symbol. Um, and we can just simply click and drag uh, and color in the white circle. And now it's completely gone. So those are two different ways to get rid of that donut shape in the middle there. 
I'm going to hit uh, Command Shift D to bring back my regular artboard. And I'm going to close down the Pathfinder menu. So that's all good to go. I'm also just going to shift my legend off to the side a little bit for a second. And we can beef this up one more time. I'm going to select all of it and I'm going to hit uh, Group Command G. And what I mean by beef it up, because I realized that made no sense, is I want to apply an effect to it. So we're going to apply an Extrude and Bevel effect. And you can see that this is kind of already taking our pie chart to a whole new uh, dimension. Um, please excuse the pun. I'm sorry. I really don't know what's in, in me this morning, but it's happening. Um, and what I want to do is I'm just, I don't like how thick it was. So I've reduced the extrude depth. I've just angled it in a way that I like. You guys could angle it however you want. I'm using plastic shading and I want to bring the shading over to the left side of our sphere. Um, I'm going to increase the ambient light probably up to 70 so it's nice and bright. And the highlight intensity, I can raise that up as well. I really just want this thing to be, uh, you know, nice and as bright as possible. In this case, I'm going to leave the shading color as black because we're dealing with so many different colors here. Um, and that's, that's cool. So I'm going to hit OK. And now the really awesome thing about this is using the direct selection tool, A on your keyboard or up in the top right, I can actually grab this section and you can pull it apart. Um, if you wanted to sort of emphasize a specific data point, whoops, sorry. If you wanted to specifically emphasize this, uh, a specific data point you can do this sort of thing now where you're pulling it apart from the rest of the chart and you're really trying to make note of what this section is like that beef tacos really did super well and we know from our previous tutorial that we can go under the appearance panel and with our selection tool selecting the entire graph we can go in and we can change the angle of the uh of the whole thing um so we can go in and we can actually, you know, put this on a little bit of a nicer angle for everybody. Uh, we can angle it for closer towards our audience. And there you have it. So now if you wanted to, you could use your selection tool. And oh, these guys are still grouped together. Holy cow. See, the graph tool really just likes to group absolutely everything. If you wanted to, you could grab all of your different... Uh, sort of legend um, legend elements and you could bring them you know closer to their specific uh, data point data set and there we go that is one way you could go about stylizing a graph or a chart if you want to now I'm not gonna go I'm just gonna go back to our original one here that's fully linked um, I'm not going to get into all these other graph types because they all basically operate the same way. Um, one thing that you just need to be aware of is the trans, uh, sorry, is uh, if you want to, you know, transpose your columns and rows. Um, so right now, also what I'm going to do actually, I'm just going to hit um, X out of this and I'm going to get rid of this circle because it's kind of distracting. Cool. Um, I'm going to go back into my graph data. And so with our rows transposed, so this is, uh, this is how our um, bar graph was originally, where you have the name of the data value underneath it and everything looks good. But if you transpose your rows and columns, you'll wind up with a legend. So sometimes when you're experimenting around with your graph types, um, if you find that a graph doesn't look the way you think it should look, it might have something to do with the transpose that you've set. Uh, and you can also tell it um, which side you want it to be on. This is useful um, for certain types of uh, information depending on how long it is. Um, if you notice, uh, I think some of the data around uh, COVID-19 from uh, government websites, their legend will be on the right-hand side because they really need you to understand um, chronologically to today's date uh, what the data is actually saying as opposed to chronologically from the other date. Uh, so this would be on the left-hand side. So just something to be aware of when you're designing your charts and graphs is really what the graph is trying to communicate and uh, what, what you want the viewer to understand from it. 
But that has been my demonstration on charts and graphs. I hope you guys found it helpful, and I'll catch you in the next video.